Tonight on West Dakota, Fox News at 9, a woman attacks a pregnant soldier all over a parking spot. Plus, police have zeroed in on a person of interest in a Minot shooting. But first, the checkered professional past of a Burley County Sheriff's deputy arrested for stealing more than a pound of meth. This is West Dakota Fox News at 9 with Molly Martinez and meteorologist Henry Blakes. Your first news of the night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Good evening, I'm Molly Martinez. New details tonight in the arrest of a Burley County Sheriff's deputy accused of stealing a pound of meth. According to reports, Burley County Sheriff's deputies found broken pieces of a glass from a pipe at Kerry Kamrowski's home in Lincoln on April 7th. Deputies say the glass tested positive for methamphetamine. Officials described Kamrowski as disheveled and unkempt when they found him at his home after taking a three-hour lunch. He was then taken to the department. A deputy told Kamrowski that he thought he was on something, to which he bowed his head and replied, what do you think I'm on? The deputy sergeant drove Kamrowski back to the home and in the car he asked what he would do about paying bills without a job, to which he jokingly replied, I don't know, maybe I'll go sell crack. A search warrant of Kamrowski's home was conducted on April 10th and that's when officials found a pound of meth and other items that have been collected as evidence. West Dakota Fox got a hold of Kamrowski's personnel files detailing infractions during his five-year tenure with the department. Today, Daniela Hurtado spoke with the sheriff who says Kamrowski was taken off the task force in January after multiple strikes. When he was reinstated, it was only a matter of time until he was written up again. Former Deputy Kerry Kamrowski was on the hot seat a few times during his time on the force. His latest was the last straw. Moving into the narcotics field and getting involved um, with methamphetamine, that is absolutely not acceptable. The department has a progressive discipline model where they try to work with the deputy before taking it to the sheriff. In Kamrowski's case, things had to be taken further. These two reports from February show Kamrowski was being disobedient and tardy, which led him to be reprimanded twice by Sheriff Heinert. We have so much invested in uh, dollars and time into their training and background and getting them to come to work for us that I just don't want to try to walk away from them unless they've done something drastically wrong. Is anyone else involved with something similar? I absolutely hope not, but I don't know. Heiner also says Kamrowski's situation reflects on the entire agency. Yeah. Three men and two minors are behind bars tonight in connection with an armed robbery in Dickinson over the weekend. Yesterday, police apprehended 19-year-old Benjamin Walton and 18-year-olds Devin Morgan and Kendrick Perkins for their involvement in Saturday's stick-up. Police say four people broke into the apartment carrying weapons that may have actually been airsoft guns. Officers say they stole marijuana and other personal property. Minot police have now identified a person of interest in an early morning shooting. They're looking for 33-year-old Crystal Johnson, but they are not calling her a suspect. They say a 53-year-old man was shot in the leg just before 3.30 a.m. on 10th Street Southeast. He's being treated at the hospital. Okay, let's switch it up a little bit and send it over to Henry for our first look at weather. Thanks, Henry. A few hours ago, the Supreme Court heard arguments in South Dakota versus Wayfair. It's a case that originated as Quill vs. North Dakota in this state back in 1992. It's challenging the fact that online retailers don't have to pay sales tax if they don't have a brick and mortar presence in the state. Critics argue that this loophole is causing states to lose billions of dollars in tax revenue yearly. Senator Heitkamp originally led the charge 25 years ago. Now 39 other states are on board. A decision is expected in June. Speaking of Senator Heidi Heitkamp, FEC filings show the senator reimbursed herself and other family members using campaign funds. In January, records show Representative Kevin Kramer did the same thing. The filings show that Heitkamp paid family members about $3,000. Kramer paid upwards of $200,000. In a statement, the Heitkamp campaign says comparing Kevin Kramer's hundreds of thousands of dollars of campaign spending on himself and his family payroll to Heidi's reimbursement of hot dog buns and chippers for campaign events is a good analogy of them as candidates. The Kramer campaign responded as well, saying, these actions are legal and appropriate on both sides. We all know family farms and small businesses in our state are largely run by families working together. It's one of the most coveted awards, and this week a new class of recipients can call themselves Pulitzer Prize winners. 
That includes 30-year-old rapper Kendrick Lamar. He won for the music category. This year's Pulitzers for National Journalism broke the mold a little bit. The organization awarded it to two competitors, both the Washington Post and the New York Times, for their relentless work in uncovering Russian interference in the 2016 election. Today, I spoke with the Post's political reporter, Tom Hamburger, on the importance of their work. A vital part of the original idea of American democracy was that an informed electorate makes a democracy function and work, and that without transparency, without reporting, democracy won't function. Hamburger says they had no idea how big this story would become and that it's far from over. And prove that it's far from over. Today, President Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, appeared in federal court. Cohen faces charges, some serious legal issues, and now there's concern about whether he'll cut a deal with prosecutors. Plus, a bombshell discovery after one of his secret clients is revealed. Reporter Doug Lazader has the latest developments from Washington. And President Trump departed for Florida yesterday, but it's hard to leave behind the odd legal battle playing out involving his attorney, Michael Cohen, who headed into a federal court yesterday in New York. Now, Cohen was ordered to disclose his stable of clients, just three, including the president, Republican fundraiser Elliot Broidy, and a mystery client that Cohen was eventually forced to name, Fox News host Sean Hannity. As soon as uh, that name was announced, there was an audible gasp in the courtroom that's largely crowded with journalists, and some journalists immediately ran outside court. To all of you liberals in the media... And Hannity is a defender of the America, president, but he was quick to distance himself from Cohen. Michael Cohen never represented me in any legal matter. I never retained his services. I never received an invoice. I never paid Michael Cohen for legal fees. So why does this even matter? Because Cohen is trying to make the case that he is a legitimate attorney with actual clients, not just a so-called fixer for the president, and that his records, seized by the FBI, should be protected under attorney-client privilege. Among other things, Cohen orchestrated a payment to porn star Stormy Daniels, who says she had an affair with the president, and she was in the courtroom. For years, Mr. Cohen has acted like he is above the law. He has considered himself and openly referred to himself as Mr. Trump's fixer. He's played by a different set of rules, or should we say no rules at all. Today, the state's Industrial Commission met to talk about a new gas capture policy. Lynn Helms, the director of the Department of Mineral Resources, says this new policy will let people continue as they are if they're meeting their goals. For those who aren't, they'll be under more scrutiny from the department. And this will clearly help companies focus their efforts where they're having problems as opposed to uh, that, that broader, uh, you know, trying to look at everything all the time. The commission approved the new gas capture policy. The NTSB says one person is dead after a Southwest airline flight blows an engine. The plane was forced into an emergency landing in Philadelphia. The flight was traveling from New York to Dallas when it experienced the engine failure midair. 143 passengers and five crew members were on board the plane at the time. And a dashboard cam was rolling the moment a small plane crash lands onto a highway in Colorado Springs. This was earlier this week. Police say after the landing, the plane skidded and hit a guardrail. Three people were on board at the time of the crash. Only one was taken to a local hospital to receive treatment. The extent of their injuries is unknown. A person is dead after a big rig pileup in Arizona. It happened early this morning near Tonopah. Along with the two semis, several other cars were tangled up in the crash. It's unclear from which vehicle the fatality occurred. Two homes are destroyed and three others damaged after a fire rolled through a Colorado neighborhood. Fire crews tweeted the video today showing two homes fully engulfed in flames with a third one also catching fire. Strong winds created a challenge for firefighters with the National Weather Service reporting gusts of winds up to 60 miles an hour. Retailer Dick's Sporting Goods is set to destroy all of its unsold assault-style rifles. The company announced back in February that it will no longer sell the firearms to customers under 21. In most cases, any unsold products would typically be returned to the manufacturer, but according to a Dick's spokesperson, the retailer will instead destroy them in compliance with federal guidelines. The destroyed parts will then be sent to a salvage company to be recycled. And an ugly scene unfolds in Macon, Georgia. You can see a woman confront two military women about a parking spot. One of those soldiers is pregnant. 
That's when the woman and her male companion start swinging and yelling. Several cameras were rolling during that altercation. That woman was arrested for assault. And time is running out to file your taxes. And in the 11th hour, the IRS website goes down. The IRS didn't have an immediate reason for the failure, but it said its online payment system become, became unavailable at 2.50 a.m. this morning. Acting Commissioner David Cowder acknowledged that the issue Tuesday uh, in a House Oversight Committee hearing meeting and said the agency is working to resolve the issues. He said taxpayers should continue to file as they normally would. Starbucks is closing its 8,000 company-owned stores in the U.S. on Tuesday, May 29th to educate employees on racial bias. The news follows an uproar over the arrest of two black men who are waiting for a friend at a Philadelphia Starbucks last week. The store manager called police and the men were arrested for trespassing. The company says CEO Kevin Johnson met with the two men on Monday and apologized for how they were treated. In environmental news, a plastic eating enzyme may soon help fight the world's plastic pollution problem. Scientists made the discovery while examining the structure of a natural enzyme discovered at a Japanese waste recycling center in 2016. The mutated enzyme is able to digest a form of plastic used in millions of tons of manufactured plastic. Even though we are well past April's halfway point, snowstorms continue to pummel much of the north and Indiana is no exception. This is the fifth snowiest spring on record in Indianapolis, with 61% of the total snow of the season falling since March. Henry, is there any hope in sight? Yeah, once summer gets here, but hey, for the time being, things are looking up. Welcome back. The ability to read is the foundation of any good education. Lewis and Clark Elementary School in Wilston offers a unique program to encourage kids to fall in love with books. Reporter Bree Stahl shows us. A good book can take a reader anywhere. Merida and her mother raced away from the ruined castle. For 26 years, Lewis and Clark Elementary School has taken students on an imaginative journey to inspire a love of reading through Readersville Day. The bear let out an angry roar. Students have a chance to choose among a variety of workshops that bring reading to life through activities connected to the books chosen by the workshop clinicians. One day, Queen Eleanor. Almost every classroom in the school is transformed into a different world. But some students get to go off campus to workshops held at local businesses. Every story or book or group of books that a clinician chooses has something to do with that hands-on activity as well. So it's engaging kids not only in the reading process, but other things that you can do with it as well. This year's theme is the wonderful world of words, which is based on Disney books. The school is slowly transforming with artwork and decorations, but one of the things students are most excited about is the teacher and staff play that is put on every year. Well, I am excited for the play. It's going to be amazing. The lights, the music, everybody singing along. Teacher and Readersville organizer Renee Rickyfee says the play came about after a presenter one year canceled last minute and she had a big chunk of time to fill. She went home, wrote a play, got fellow friends and staff to be the actors, and now it's the highlight of the day. And the kids love, love, love to see their teachers be on stage with costumes and crazy accents and who's the evil one and who's the good one. Ricky Fee says students start asking in September when Readersville will be, which is an indicator Readersville is succeeding in its mission to show reading is important for everyone. You get to go to different places when you read. Like you can either go to Imaginary Land or you can go to some place that you've never been. One more reason to love the wonderful world of words. For West Dakota Fox News at 9, I'm Bree Stahl. With penguins on parade today as an Australian zoo releases five chicks back into the wild. The zoo nursed the five back to health after they sustained injuries from a fishing hook, dehydration, and a broken foot. Officials say after spending two months at the Taronga Wildlife Hospital in Sydney, the five penguins are finally ready to live in their natural habitat. And a trio of newborn redneck wallabies, that sounds like a bad name for them, hopping into the hearts of visitors at the San Diego Zoo. 
standing only about a foot tall and weighing less than five pounds each. The six-month-old babies are being hand-raised at the zoo's nurseries. They feed three times a day with a special formula made just for marsupials. The zoo says their favorite thing to do is eat and sleep. Henry, we're not so different from those marsupials. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to eat and sleep, but we can't right now, but we will eventually when the weather gets better, but we are talking about precipitation for tonight, but this is your morning commute. Cloudy, we could have a little bit of precip for some, especially across the Bismarck Mandana area. Wind remaining light, clouds continue, um, could be looking at more of a rain snow mix to start and then gradually becoming mostly rain during the afternoon. Otherwise, we're in the 40s and a few 50s. Another chance of precip across the far south on Friday, but the weekend, finally, some weekend weather to look forward to. Henry, no precipitation and 60s for a change. You're giving us a gift. Look yes. at that, Friday and Saturday. We're long overdue. Oh man, get out of your pouches, marsupials. <laughs> it's gonna be nice out. We'll see you tomorrow.